Feel the power. Welcome to Righteous Invasion of Truth with Dr. Abel Damina. Hello, Facebook family and friends. What a joy to be able to welcome you today to this wonderful broadcast. You know, it's always a joy to serve you the grace of God to teach you the word of God. Remember, this season we are on with Riot Live and the Counselor every day. Teaching and teaching, bringing clarity to God's word. You must remember that every time we study the word of God, the intent is to equip you so that you can also equip others. Brother Paul said to Timothy, the things that you have heard of me among many witnesses, the same, commit to faithful men who shall in turn commit to others. The word of God is going to come with so much power. Revelation knowledge is going to come, you know, to you through the teaching of God's word on this broadcast. And every day, the word comes twice on this platform. 12 noon GMT plus 1 and 10 p.m. GMT plus 1 every day right here on Facebook. Except when we go live each evening at 6 p.m. GMT plus 1. And I'm so excited because we're examining very critical subjects of the scripture, doctrinal exegesis, bringing clarity and equipping you in the knowledge of Christ. Just before we get in the service of today, I want to also mention, if you're in an area around the world where you're following these teachings and there is no Christ-centered church where you can attend church, two things are very important. Number one, God doesn't want you to be in isolation. The Bible says God sets the solitary in families. You need to belong to a local church, a local fellowship, where you're able to learn with other brethren and beyond learning, where you're able to serve the brethren with the grace of God and the gift of God upon your life. You know, the word of God teaches us against selfishness. When you begin to stay by yourself, you're being selfish. You are denying other brethren the grace of God upon your life. So I want to encourage you to ensure that you are a part of a Christ-centered fellowship. And if there's none in your area, send me a mail today, Dr. Abel Damina. Tell me where you are. If you want to host or you want to be the coordinator of the campus, we will train you, equip you, and help you start one in your country, in your community, so you become a lighthouse to the darkness in your community. Very, very important. I'm expecting to hear from you today. And if there is a Christ-centered church, it's good for you to belong there and make a difference. If there's none, we expect to hear from you. Remember also to order for our teaching materials, both the books and the audio teachings, so that you can equip yourself and establish yourself in the light of Christ Jesus. Fasting your seat bells right now as I take you into that service where the spirit of our God is already moving. Happy view. A believer does not need to break any foundation because the only foundation a believer has is Christ. You don't break Christ. Once you're born again, you're on a sure foundation. If things are not working, it's not because you are under a curse. It's not because you are not born again. No. Things may not be working because of certain miscalculations on your part or lack of skill or lack of sensitivity to when the Holy Ghost gave you direction. But it cannot be because there's a foundation. A Christian has no foundation to break. A Christian cannot be possessed by devils. To be possessed means Satan entered your spirit and sat there. That's possession. How can a Christian who is born of God, the DNA of God is in you. How can Satan and God live together? So that is a deception and it's fraud to the body of Christ. Join Drs. Abel and Rachel Daminer in New Christian Camp Meeting 2021 and Ask the Counselor with Michael Bush. Theme in Christ Realities. Ministry, Dr. Abel Daminer. Date, 31st January to 14th February 2021. Time, Mondays to Saturdays, 6 p.m. daily on Inspiration FM 105.9 or Comfort FM 95.1 or Excel FM 106.9 or Radio Aquaibo 90.5 or Unio FM 100.7 or and Heritage FM 104.9 or
and also live on Sunday, 7.30 a.m. first service and 10.30 a.m. second service. Venue, Power City International, number 98 Wangibo Road, Oyo, Akwaibom State, Nigeria. Host, Drs. Abel and Rachel Daminer. Be there. A Christian life devoid of a regular prayer pattern is a life living in sin. If you are not praying, you are living in disobedience. And disobedience is a sin. So if you are not praying, you are living in sin. Why? Because prayer is an instruction. Power City International presents International Week of Corporate Prayers. Praying in the Spirit with Dr. Abel Tamino. Date Monday 18th to Sunday 24th January 2021. Time 12 noon to 1 p.m. every day. Venue Power City International, number 98 Wangibu Road, Uyo, Akwaibom State, Nigeria. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. <laughs> Don't be left out. Look at Second Timothy chapter three, verse number sixteen. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Inspiration of God. The scriptures are given for doctrine. Doctrine means teaching or explanation. The scriptures are not given just for reference. They are given for teaching or explanation. When the teaching goes on, it also brings you to a place of reproof. And that's where you get conviction or evidence. Conviction has to do with evidence where evidence is given. Evidence of life, evidence of death, evidence of Satan, evidence of evil, and evidence of the spirit. The scriptures gives us evidence of life generally. Every area of life, the scriptures are able to give us understanding and the scriptures are able to answer our queries on issues of life. When you have that, it is to the intent that you come to a place of faith that you may believe. Remember, brother Paul said to Timothy that from a child you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. So the intent for Bible teaching and allowing the Bible bring you answers to the questions of life is to bring you to a place of faith in Christ. The scriptures are not just meant to be read. The scriptures are meant to be believed. They are given for faith. It's called the word of faith which we preach. We must believe that the Bible is the mind of God for us. The Bible is the mind of God for us. You see, so we must all agree that the scriptures are the revelation of God. The scriptures are the revelation of God. That is, the mind of God is a person. John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. The mind of God is a person. And the word was with God. And the word was God. John chapter 1 verse 2. The same was in the beginning with God. Verse 3. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. Nothing was made that was made. So the mind of God is a person. The mission of the scriptures is to reveal the mind of God. That is why we took time to establish that the Bible is not the word of God because the word of God is a person. 
The Bible tells us in John 1 14, it says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as the glory of the begotten of the Father. The word became flesh. So the revelation of God is in a person. The revelation of God is in the person of the Christ. Let's investigate sin a little. But remember, we are looking at three personalities. Number one, God. Number two, man. Number three, angels. And by identification, Satan. So let's investigate the origin of sin a little. I told you that Genesis chapter 2 gives us metaphors. Genesis chapter 2 verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Next verse. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So question. How did death come into the world? Well, we know that death came by sin. So, eating of an apple will be the way to explain sin. Will be the way to explain. Because we are dealing with metaphors. Remember, death came by sin. Sin will be to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Sin will be to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Sin will be not to eat of the tree of life. To reject to eat of the tree of life will be sin. You cannot have sin if you do not have an instruction. You cannot have sin if you do not have an instruction. And you cannot have darkness if there was no light. Darkness is darkness because there is no light. The exit of light is the arrival of darkness. So he says of every tree, talking of the tree of life, of every tree eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, do not eat. For in the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. Then the serpent comes to Eve and Adam and says, Did God tell you not to eat? It is not true. It is not so. Thou shalt not surely die. Now if you observe, after that statement by the serpent, the woman said nothing. The woman answered nothing. But she went ahead and ate. And we have found what it means to eat of the fruit is to speak. To speak. She says nothing afterwards. Question. How does a man eat? How does a man eat? Second question. How does a man sin? How does a man sin? I love brother James because brother James gives us an explanation. And we are looking at why things happen on the earth. Why things happen the way that they happen on the earth. James chapter 1 verse 13. Please pay attention. Let no man say when he's tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempted he any man. 14. But every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. 15. Then when lust had conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. The word tempt there is a Greek word that means to test the quality of something. To look at how durable a material is. To look at how durable a material is. He says, let no man say, when he is tempted, I'm tempted of God. He says, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempt he any man. For God cannot means he's used to explain something. For God cannot. That is the reason why he uses 
you know, the word for God cannot. He's explaining that God cannot be tempted with evil, neither does he tempt anyone. The word evil simply means something that is not good or something that is not proper. That means God does not use sin to test people. God does not use sin to test people. There's a scripture where it says God tested Abraham. The word test in that context of Abraham is when you test run a material. To test run a car, for example. That is not to put it to scrutiny, but to experiment. You want to use it as a car to prove, to reveal, to unveil Abraham's faith. It's not the same as testing with evil. It's not the same as tempting with evil. It was just to test run or to reveal Abraham's faith. Now, look at James chapter 1 verse 14. Please pay attention. But every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. So if God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempt he any man, did God create the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Did God create the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Remember, we read earlier that everything God created was good. Then in chapter 2 of Genesis, we see the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So, did God create the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Please pay attention. Genesis chapter 2 verse 9. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight. And good for food. Every tree that is pleasant to the sight. And good for food. The tree of life also. In the midst of the garden. And the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Question. Is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil good for food? Is it good for food? Of course. I'm waiting for your answers. Look at that Genesis 2, 9 again. Please pay attention. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The tree of life also. And the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil good for food? No. Remember he said, if you eat it, you will die. So there's no way it can be good for food. Because everything he asked them to eat was good for food. That's why I use the word also. The tree of life also. Meaning he is talking of something different from what is good for food. There was no debt on the earth then. Remember there was no debt. So the knowledge of good and evil. Is it good for food? No. We hear about the tree of life. So let's go back again and see. Remember, God does not tempt with evil. Neither tempted he any man. How does sin come? How do things happen the way that they do? James 1.15 Then when loss had conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth dead the tree of the knowledge of good and evil the day you eat it you will surely die the day you eat it you will surely die 
James 1.15 again. Please pay attention. Then when loss had conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Pay attention. But every man is tempted in verse 14. Every man. That shows you that Jesus was tempted as a man. Not as God. Because God cannot be tempted with evil. So if Jesus was tempted, it means he was tempted as man. Look at that James 1.14. But every man is tempted. Every man. Every man is the word testao in the Greek. Humanity. Every man means humanity is tempted humanity is tempted this is a general way people sin this is a general way people sin so humanity is tempted when he is drawn away of his own of his own lost and enticed so what is lost lost is a desire lost is a desire so what precedes sin is a desire lost before there can be seen there must be a desire question what precedes desire information for there to be desire you must have information it is only what you have knowledge of that you can desire if you don't have knowledge of something, you can't desire that thing. So, before there can be a desire, there must be knowledge. So, it is knowledge that brings desire. Then desire, when you are drawn of it, will bring you to sin. So, every man is drawn away. Mark the word, drawn away. So, if Jesus was tempted... That will mean that Jesus had a desire. Jesus had a desire. That's why the devil could tell Jesus, If you are the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Temptation must come from a desire. And remember, he was hungry when the devil tempted him with bread. So Jesus' temptation... It's not unique to Jesus. It's not unique to Jesus. Every man is tempted. All of humanity. So since Jesus is a man, the same way you are tempted is the same way he was tempted. Look at Hebrews 4.15. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. He was in all points tempted. Tempted like as we are. That's a good place to underline. Like as we are. So temptation was not unique to Jesus. Neither is he unique to us. Like as we are. Yet without sin. Question. How do you get tempted? You get tempted by desire. How does desire lead you to sin? Desire leads to sin when you are drawn away. That word is key. When you are drawn away. So, if Jesus wasn't hungry, then what Satan told Jesus was not temptation. If Jesus wasn't hungry, then when Satan said, command the stones be made bread, it wouldn't have been temptation. The reason why it is temptation is because Jesus was hungry. There has to be a desire for it to be a temptation. James said he has to be drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust has conceived, it brings forth sin. Then sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. So, sin does not emerge 
until lost has been conceived. And when it is completed, it brings forth death. So take note of the motions. Knowledge, desire, and the will of man will bring temptation. Knowledge, desire, and the will of man will bring temptation. Then sin will emerge. Sin will emerge when the desire is not controlled. Sin will emerge out of lust when the desire is not controlled. That's why I use the word drawn away. Uncontrollable desire. Uncontrollable desire. Then when desire is not controlled, the man is drawn. Drawn away. And then the Greek word for drawn away is dragged. The man is dragged away. Dragged. The man is dragged away and it will result in sin. Then when sin is concluded, it bringeth forth death. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 12. Wherefore, let him that thinketh his standard Take heed lest he fall. Verse 13. There had no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Wow. All temptations are common. There is no peculiar temptation. It's common to everybody. All temptations are common. Meaning, we can learn from the temptation in the Bible. Because we now know how temptations come to us. So we can learn from the temptations in the Bible. There is no temptation prepared for you. The temptations that you face every day are common to all of humanity. People go through them. People have gone through them. People will still go through such temptations. Every temptation is common to man. But notice, God is faithful. Look at that verse 13 of 1 Corinthians chapter 10. There are no temptation taken but such as is common to man. But God is faithful... Who will not suffer you to be tempted? Above that you are able. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Every time there is a temptation, there is a way out of the temptation. There is no temptation that is unique to anyone. None. And please listen carefully. There cannot be seen without a target. There cannot be seen without a target. Because sin means to miss the target. To miss the goal. To miss the target. So for there to be seen means there was a target. God's plan for man was life. John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. In him was life. God's plan was life. Life is only in Christ. Who is the word of God. Life is only in Christ. Who is the word of God. So there cannot be seen without a target. If man was given life by God and he didn't choose life, that means there was a desire. Desire means there was a will that can be executed independently. Desire means there was a will that can be executed independently that's the meaning of desire there is a will that can be executed 
independent of the instruction. God gave man choice. And man's choice is expressed in man's desire. God gave man choice. And man's choice is expressed in man's desire. Please take note. Man's choice precedes sin. It precedes sin. And it precedes the inception of life. What is called man is that being that can choose. What is called man is that being that can choose. That being that can desire is man. So man has a concept of determination in his conduct. Man has a concept of determination in his conduct. What we had before Adam is independence and dependence. Life means dependence. The knowledge of good and evil means independence. The tree of life means dependence. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil means independence. That only, that, that, that only stands before man. If he doesn't have that, then he's not a man. If man doesn't have that choice of dependence, life, independence, knowledge of good and evil, then he is not man. What makes man? is choice that ability that will that man has to choose if you don't have that will and the ability to choose you're not a man and jesus's humanity was proven by temptation if he couldn't be tempted then he is not a man if you have no choice then you are not a man. You are a man because you have a choice. You are a man because you have a choice. You cannot be tempted when you are not a man. Because no temptation has taken you but such as is common to man. Common to man. What is man? Man is a being with choice a being with choice so let's go back to the devil and listen to jesus about sin remember we have said that what goes in does not corrupt or defile a man so if you imagine someone who ate mango or guava or apple and became a sinner. Then you are not understanding what we are teaching at all. Look at Jesus in Matthew 15 verse 11. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man. But that which cometh out of the mouth. This defileth a man. Verse 12. Then came his disciples and said unto him. Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they had this saying? <laughs> so Jesus told us, it is what comes out of a man that defiles the man. What comes out of a man? Words. W-O-R-D-S. Words. Words comes in by ears. And they come out by the mouth. Look at verse 13 of Matthew 15. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly father had not planted shall be rooted up. Shall be rooted up. Why did he say plant? Well, observe verse 17 of Matthew 15 to 20. Do not ye yet understand 
that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the drought. Next verse. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. 20. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashing hands defileth not a man. Please pay attention. So if Adam had eaten a fruit on a tree, when he went to the toilet, that would have been the end. So Jesus gives us an example. It is what comes out of a man that defiles the man. God gave us a principle, remember, the law in Genesis. A principle in Genesis chapter 1 verse 11. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. Wow. So what precedes a tree? Seed. Seed will yield a tree. So when you see a tree, what was there before the tree? Seed. So before it becomes a tree, it is planted. Seed, planted, germinates tree. From tree, fruit from tree fruit now so it is seed planted tree fruit okay now in the parables of jesus both in mark chapter 4 and luke chapter 8 jesus explained that the seed are words the seeds are words the ground is the heart the seed is the word the soil or the ground is the heart of man the sower soweth the word the seed is the word it goes to the ground or it goes into the heart of man remember it will yield forth fruit Seed cannot grow on its own without the soil, without the earth. For a seed to grow, it must contact the soil. So words cannot grow without the heart. The heart is the soil. So seeds come first to the heart. The seed will go to the heart then it will germinate and bring forth a tree and the tree will produce fruit. Now, look at Genesis 1.29 and God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. What did Adam have before the tree? Seed. Who did God give the seed to? Adam. To do what with it? To plant. See that. God gave seed to Adam. So Adam will plant the seed. So God gave seed to Adam so he can bring forth trees. And the seed will bring forth fruit after its kind. If you look at Genesis closely, the seed will be words. The tree will be the life of man in Genesis chapter 2. The tree will be the life of man in Genesis chapter 2. Question again. What precedes trees? What precedes trees? Seed. So the seed 
has the tree in itself. The tree is in the seed. So anywhere they say seed, what do you have? You have a tree. You have a seed. It's an indication you have a tree. So a seed has the tree in itself. Therefore, Adam's dominion was in what? Words. Words. What he spoke. So the seed, Kabayana, was to determine the events. The seed was to determine the outcome of a man's life. The events. God's revelation to us is the Bible. Is that true? Hello? Is that true? What is in the Bible? Word. The totality of God's revelation is communicated via word, written word. James, I love brother James. He has helped us a great deal, man. James said something. Pay attention. James chapter 3 verse 1. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. Two, for in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, word, the same is a perfect man. And if a man does not offend in word, he is able also to bridle the whole body. Your words control the events of your life. Please pay attention. Verse 3 and 4 of James 3. Verse 3 and 4. Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths that they may obey us. And we turn about their whole body. Next verse. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm whithersoever the governor listed. Wow. So he says, those big things are controlled by insignificant things, small things. Small things. Look at a ship that has the capacity to take, you know, within about a thousand human beings with football fields, with restaurants in hundreds, with bedrooms, with sporting centers, all in the ship. It's just a little steering that controls the totality of that humongous ship. Look at forceful horses. Yet you put bits around their tongue. Once you press their tongue, it controls their body. Big events are controlled by insignificant things. Why do things happen? The way they happen on the earth. Big events of life. Big activities of life. Are determined by very little insignificant things. Look at that James chapter 3 verse number 5. Even so the tongue is a little member. And boasted great things. Behold how great a matter. A little fire kindled. What kind of fire? Little fire. Give me the next verse. And the tongue is a fire. A world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members. That it defiled the whole body. And set it on fire the course of nature. And it is set on fire of hell. Or on fire of judgment. The tongue there refers to words. Words, the tongue. God gave man a determinant. A determinant for why things happen the way they happen. God gave man a determinant. Seed to plant. Seed to plant. A determinant. Seed to plant. Things that rule the earth are insignificant things. 
things that rule the earth are insignificant things. Solomon told us, death and life is in the power of the tongue. How did you get saved? If you believe. How do you believe? By hearing words. Romans chapter 10 verse 8. Pay attention. But what saith if the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart? That is the word of faith which we preach. Verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. 11. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. The most insignificant determine the events on the earth. So why do things happen the way they happen on the earth? The simple explanation of the seed. And we will explore some more. Remember Satan said to Jesus, If you are the son of God, Jesus answered, It is written. Why did Jesus say it is written three times? It is written. It is written. He was resisting the temptation. It was not an argument. It was a resistance. So he put up a resistance against the devil with words. It is written. It is written. It is written. Jesus kept talking. When he was on the cross, he was talking. When he was in the grave, he kept talking. Thou shalt not leave my soul in hell. Thou suffer the Holy One to see corruption. When he rose from the dead, he was still talking. Why? Words are seeds. When you plant them, they will germinate and give you a tree. And out of the tree will come the fruits that your life will produce. Words control the activities on the earth. Words control the activities on the earth. Insignificant as they may be. Insignificant as they may be. Now, remember, we also talked about fire. Hell fire. In that verse we read, it's put into hell fire. Now, if you have heard of people kept saying, I went to hell, I died, I went to hell, I saw myself in hell, and then I came out of hell. A woman said she went to hell and saw a lot of women in hell. And then she woke up. So the question is, which hell was she in? Why is it only her that woke up? Why didn't the other women wake up with her? Fire in the Bible was used to explain spiritual principle. Please listen carefully. Fire in the Bible was used to explain spiritual principle. So question, what was the first time you saw fire in the Bible? First time. What was the first time you saw fire in the Bible? Genesis chapter 8 is the first time we see the word fire literally spoken of. Look at it, Genesis 8, 20. And Noah builded an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings, burnt offerings, burnt offerings on the altar. You cannot burn without fire. Okay? You cannot burn without fire. Why were animals burned? Because fire is judgment. Fire is judgment. So the animals took the judgment on behalf of the person offering the offering. The animals took the judgment of the fire on behalf of the person who offered the offerings in the Old Testament. So we can infer that Abel did the same thing. You remember Abel in Genesis chapter 4? He brought animals, clean animals, and they were burned. That is to teach us that someday the Son of God will come sinless harmless, guiltless. 
One day the son of God, who is the lamb of God, will come sinless, guiltless, harmless. Then the judgment of God will come upon him on behalf of humanity. The judgment of God will come upon the son of God on behalf of humanity. Sodom took fire. Sodom and Gomorrah. Because that was the judgment for sin. So physical fire is symbolically used to teach judgment. Please, that's important. So fire teaches judgment. Animals were killed and burned. So we can infer that Abel did that today. Now nothing was wrong with Cain until the offering. The offering of Cain was not given in faith. And nothing was right with Abel until the offering. So it was not about Cain or Abel. It was about the offering. The offering of Abel justified Abel. The offering of Cain condemned Cain. The offering of Abel was faith in the sacrifice of Christ. The offering of Cain was faith in his ability to qualify. So nothing was either wrong or right. All of them were in the same place. It was the offering that drew the distinction. The offering that drew the distinction. Please, that's very important. I am not perfect, but I come on the basis of a substitute. My sins are on the substitute. I deserve death. The substitute takes it on my behalf. That is the essence of offerings before. They brought them before the Lord. And that's what Abel did before the Lord. God asked Cain, where is Abel your brother? If you do well, sin offering lies at your door. Cain had the chance to offer sin offering, but he refused. So when animals were brought in the Old Testament, it was judgment or fire is judgment. Fire. Judgment for sin. You know, there's a story in the Bible about the rich man and Lazarus. Jesus told us that story. That story is both literal and metaphoric. The rich man said, my tongue is hot. Bring water to cool my tongue. That's a metaphor. That's a metaphor. My tongue is hot. Bring water to cool my tongue is a metaphor. Because when a man dies, his body is here. His body does not go with him. So his tongue cannot be hot. Which means it was a figure of speech. Now, there is judgment of God on sinners that don't believe the gospel. But don't think it comes by petrol and matches. You know, like literal fire. No. So we will learn some stuff from the word in the course of this series. The believer believes the word. The believer believes the word. And whatever is not in the word of God is not a revelation to us. Whatever is not in the word of God does not form our evidence. Whatever is not in the word of God well explained does not form the basis of our belief system. Our belief system is informed and instructed by the written word of God. Is that clear? Informed, we don't imagine things. Our imagination is is restricted within the confines of God's world. Please, that's very important. So, the fire is used to explain spiritual concept, judgment. There was no literal fire on Jesus. But Jesus went to hell. But there was no literal fire. He bore the judgment of sin. Bearing the judgment of sin is the fire. Is a symbolic fire. Was Jesus born? Yes. He was born. How do we know that? Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1 and 2. To be therefore followers of God. As their children. And walk in love. As Christ also hath loved us. And had given himself for us. An offering. 
and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. Sweet smell. Like in Noah's offering. When a sacrifice smells, it means it has been burned. The judgment of sin was put on Jesus. The fire of judgment burnt Jesus. He went to hell, the place of judgment. In Psalm 22, the bulls of Bashan have compassed me. Psalm 22, he described it. Where an unbeliever goes is worse than physical fire. It is eternal separation from God. Eternal. Eternal severance from God. Like I told you, God has left his witness in every generation. So no man has an excuse. Judgment is absence of God's light. Absence of God's life. Absence of God's love. Judgment is the absence of God's life, the absence of God's light, the absence of God's love. But we have passed from death to life. Glory to God. We have passed from death to life. No judgment for us. Why do things happen the way they happen on the earth? Man is the determinant on earth. God has given man seed and man is to plant it. And when man plants seed, the seed will produce a tree that will produce fruit. So man is the determinant for why the things happen the way they happen on the earth. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. So the tongue of a wise man is like a tree of life. A man shall be satisfied with good via the words of his lips. Words like we see in Genesis determines times and seasons. Words. Words determines times and seasons. When God gave man seed, he gave man words. For by thy words thou shalt be justified. And by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And a good man shall eat good by the fruit of his lips. Man is the determinant for why things happen the way they happen. On the earth. What a man plants. He harvests. You shall have. What you say. You say it. The way you want to see it. When you say it. You surely will have the result. Of what you say. So you are the determinant. And those things that determine. The outcome of life are inside a man. Guard your heart with all diligence for out of it are the forces, the influences, the issues, the outcome of life. Out of it. Out of your heart. A good man, out of the good things inside him, it had good. An evil man, out of the evil in his heart, Bring it forth evil. No devil is responsible. Ultimately, whatever you have in life is as a result of what you planted. So mind what you plant. You plant it, but you cannot control the harvest. Because once the earth and the seed meet, the resultant effect of that combination is a harvest. The resultant effect of the combination of seed and soil is harvest. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, you guard your heart. Salvation as serious as salvation is. 
as serious as salvation is what god offers man what jesus died for yet a man must believe and he must speak he must believe in his heart and must speak with his mouth to be saved so out of a man's heart will come words that determine eternity in heaven or eternity in hell man is the determinant god has given to man what man requires to build the kind of world he wants to live in god has given to man what man requires to create the kind of world he wants to live in in this world there are men living in their world in the world everybody is not living in the same world with another it is what you plant it is what you say words are seeds that determine trees that determine fruit so the outcome of a man's life will be determined by what that man plants by way of speaking are you blessed to stand on your feet that's all i've got for you in this service glory to god a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth good things an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth evil things and whatever a man says, he will harvest. Glory to God. So we go ahead and speak right words. Bible says how forcible are right words. Father, we speak words over everyone connected to this service online, on radio, on television. Those in the house centers, Bible study groups, midweek services in all our different campuses around the world revelation knowledge like never before solution direction and answers in the name of jesus barriers are terminated and we speak to everything that is contrary to what christ has provided we command it terminated whatever my heavenly father has not planted shall be rooted out every contrary harvest that contradicts the finished work of christ by the mercy of god we terminate in the name of jesus and father we declare sick bodies are healed Barriers are terminated. Holes of the enemy broken completely in the name of Jesus. And we rejoice. We rejoice. We rejoice for all of the blessing and all of the revelation and all of the goodness of God in our direction. Thank you for answered prayer. Sick bodies be healed. Be healed. I rebuke infirmity. I rebuke sickness. I rebuke disease. Satan, get your hands off of God's property. Sick bodies be be healed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your healing power. And thank you, Lord, for miracles released upon your people in Jesus' precious name. And every believer says that amen on a note of finality. A Christian life devoid of a regular prayer pattern is a life living in sin. If you are not praying, you are living in disobedience. And disobedience is a sin. So if you are not praying, you are living in sin. Why? Because prayer is an instruction. Power City International presents International Week of Corporate Prayers. Praying in the Spirit with Dr. Abel Tamino. Date Monday 18th to Sunday 24th January 2021. Time 12 noon to 1 p.m. every day. Venue Power City International, number 98 Wangibu Road, Yo, Akwaibo State, Nigeria. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Don't be left out. A believer does not need to break any foundation because the only foundation a believer has is Christ. You don't break Christ. Once you are born again, you are on a sure foundation. If things are not working, it's not because you are under a curse. It's not because you are not born again. No. Things may not be working because of certain miscalculations on your part or lack of skill or lack of sensitivity to when the Holy Ghost gave you direction. 
but it cannot be because there's a foundation a christian has no foundation to break a christian cannot be possessed by devils to be possessed means satan entered your spirit and sat there that's possession how can a christian who is born of god the dna of god is in you how can satan and god live together so that is a deception and it's fraud to the body of christ Join Drs. Abel and Rachel Daminer in New Christian Camp Meeting 2021 and Ask the Counselor with Michael Bush. Theme in Christ Realities. Ministering Dr. Abel Daminer. Date 31st January to 14th February 2021. Time Mondays to Saturdays 6 p.m. daily on Inspiration FM 105.9 Rio, Comfort FM 95.1 Rio, Excel FM 106.9 Rio, Radio Aquaibo 90.5 Rio, Unio FM 100.7 Rio, and Heritage FM 104.9 Rio, and also live on Sunday 7:30 a.m. first service and 10:30 a.m. second service. Venue, Power City International, number 98, Wangibo Road, Uyo, Akwaibom State, Nigeria. Host, Drs. Abel and Rachel Daminer. Be there. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. Oh my goodness, what a service, what a word. I believe you've been impacted, affected with the word of his grace. Listen very carefully. It is God's intent for you to continue walking in this light. So I'm going to encourage you to keep following. Remember, every day, we're live right here on Facebook and YouTube. Every day, 12 noon GMT plus 1, 10 p.m. GMT plus 1. And in this season where we're in the midst of a program, Riot Live and Ask the Counselor, you can also be a part of the meetings every evening, 6 p.m. GMT plus 1. Now, listen carefully. If you're in an area around the world where you're following these teachings and there is no Christ-centered church where you can attend church. Two things are very important. Number one, God doesn't want you to be in isolation. The Bible says God sets the solitary in families. You need to belong to a local church, a local fellowship, where you're able to learn with other brethren and beyond learning, where you're able to serve the brethren with the grace of God and the gift of God upon your life. You know, the word of God teaches us against selfishness. When you begin to stay by yourself, you're being selfish. You are denying other brethren the grace of God upon your life. So I want to encourage you to ensure that you are a part of a Christ-centered fellowship. And if there's none in your area, send me a mail today, Dr. Abel Damina. Tell me where you are. If you want to host or you want to be the coordinator of the campus, we will train you, equip you, and help you start one in your country, in your community, so you become a lighthouse to the darkness in your community. Very, very important. I'm expecting to hear from you today. And if there is a Christ-centered church, it's good for you to belong there and make a difference. If there's none, we expect to hear from you. Remember also to order for our teaching materials, both the books and the audio teachings, so that you can equip yourself and establish yourself in the light of Christ Jesus. It's such a joy to be able to serve you the grace of God. My prayer for you is that the eyes of your understanding be flooded with light. That the reality of Christ will resonate in your mind. We rebuke sickness, disease, oppression. We come against whatever is not planted by God in your heart today. We command it rooted out. And Father, we thank you for miracles, healings, and testimonies. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen to your victory station.